Thank you to Capture One for sponsoring this video. Make sure you check out the link down below to get 20% off your annual subscription. I've been a photographer for around six years now and across that time I've experimented a lot with different equipment, different software, different workflows. I feel like I finally found a workflow that's working for me but also seems to be really beneficial for my clients. So today I'm going to share my seven step workflow as a fashion and portrait photographer from beginning right to the end. So typically I would get an email or a DM from someone who's looking to do a shoot, they'll be like hey are you available for a shoot next week or how much would you charge for this or they'll reach out to me some way and from there I begin the process of figuring out what they actually want and how I can deliver it so I usually start to discuss their needs and I want to find out what concept they have for the shoot what it's actually for and how many photos they're actually going to need some people are really decisive and they know exactly what they want they've done this before and some people just have no clue at all so they need a bit more guidance and a bit more direction so what I usually do at this point is either go back and forth via email or maybe set up a Zoom call to sort of discuss their needs and find out more what they're looking for. It's always good to have some visual references, so I often ask them for some visuals and pictures that they've seen that they like or something that kind of feels like what they're trying to create. And that way I can have a better idea in my head of what they actually want. This also helps me to have a rough idea of how much it's actually going to cost and I can begin to put together a quote. Some people feel really uncomfortable talking about money. It's unavoidable, it's business, you need to talk about it. At the end of the day, it's an exchange of services for money. So we just need to deal with it, just get it out of the way. Some people have set rates, so they have a day rate or they have like a price list for everything. Personally, I think every job is different. So I like to provide a quote and typically a quote is made up of around three things at least. Um, you ha usually have your creative fee, which is the fee for your time and your creativity and you actually doing the job. And then on some jobs you'll have a license fee or a usage fee, which depends on what the photography is being used for. So for example, if you're doing a shoot that's going to be on billboards across Europe compared to a Instagram post, they're going to have different usage or license fees. So you typically charge more for the billboards because the photos are going to have more exposure. They're going to generate more income. So typically you would charge more for something like that than you would do for just a social media campaign or like a one Instagram post. So some jobs have usage fees, some don't. And then I figure out my expenses. So I figure out how much the job is actually going to cost me to do. So I might need to hire equipment or um, book a studio or pay an assistant for the day, like so many different things, travel expenses. I need to figure out all of those things at the beginning or rough, not all of them. Some things might come later, but I try to figure out as much as I can so that I can be as transparent and as upfront with the client as possible. I think it's really important to be open and transparent about how much things are going to cost from the beginning. So that way you avoid any miscommunication and you and your client are on the same page and you can meet their expectations. Once I've got all that money stuff out the way, I can begin to conceptualize the actual shoot. So building off of those references that I got from the client in the beginning, I can begin to add my own creativity and put together a mood board based on the references that they've sent over. So I can just build off of that and begin to sort of mold a shoot around it. I usually look for references either on Pinterest, on Instagram, in magazines that I might have or looking through photo books. Photo books? What the hell is a photo book? Photo books. And I begin to collate all of these references together and put them onto a mood board. I've sort of developed my own mood board template that I kind of use time and time again, um, which has like my personal branding and stuff on it. Um, but you can use any program to create mood boards, anything like PowerPoint, Canva, InDesign, like whatever you want to use, you can use that to create a mood board. My mood board will typically have reference photos and then just some words. And I, I try to highlight like certain things. So I'll make a section for the lighting or I make a section for the set design. Like I put a lot into the mood board so that the client and the people I'm working with can have a good idea of how the shoot is actually going to come out. Once the mood board's all designed, they usually send it to the client to get some feedback. And usually they're very happy with it because it's based off of what they sent me originally and I've just built around that and sort of use my creativity to sort of develop the idea a bit further. Once the mood board is approved, I actually begin to plan the shoot based on the brief. So I'd figure out whether we're doing the shoot on location or in a studio setting. If we're shooting on location, I'll typically find photos of the location online or maybe even go and do a location recce so I can actually visit the space, see what we're working with, 
figure out the lighting, figure out where the light is coming from at certain parts of the day, have a look around at like maybe the facilities within the space, where the plug sockets are, things like that, that can just help me to plan ahead of the day and be sure that I've got all the equipment that I need and I'm ready to go. If we're shooting in a studio setting, my focus is gonna be more specifically on the lighting. So I need to figure out what style of lighting we're gonna create, whether it's hard light or soft light, and what type of modifiers I'm gonna to need to do that, how many lights I'm gonna need, where I'm gonna place them. So sometimes I would actually draw out a lighting diagram or find some references that suit the style of lighting that I wanna create for this shoot as well. Because I have been doing this for quite a while, I don't often need to test the lighting because I know the effect that certain modifiers or certain light placement is going to have. So I can sort of reference myself and things I've done in the past and then just use that again. But sometimes I create something brand new and I sort of do a light test and like experiment with it and just play around and try things out. I also want to know how many different light setups I'm going to do based on the time we have. So often I'll talk with the team. So if I, if I know who the stylist is going to be on the shoot, for example, I can talk to them and figure out how many looks they're going to do. And then that way I can figure out how many shots we're actually going to need or how many setups we're going to do and plan it out based on the lighting or the location that we're using. So now it's a big day, it's a shoot day. Um, I like to print off my mood board to bring it with me or have it on an iPad or on a screen that we can access so that we can reference it throughout the day. I like to collaborate with the team I'm working with. So again, chatting with the stylist, chatting with the hair and the makeup. If there's a set designer or an art director, just talking with them and making sure that, again, we're all on the same page. Or maybe if they've changed something or gone in a different direction, I can also adapt myself to that as well. So I like to really communicate with everyone throughout the process, because at the end of the day, this is a collaborative effort and it takes everyone working together to create the imagery that we want to create. And of course, I get set up and start shooting. Whether I'm shooting in studio or on location, I always, always, always try to shoot tethered. And that way I have my camera connected to my computer and the whole team can see the images coming through as we're shooting. It just makes life so much easier. And I always tether into Capture One. I've been using Capture One for around five years now. It is the software for tethering, raw processing. It's just the industry standard when it comes to that sort of thing. So as we're on set and we're shooting, the images are coming straight through. We can see them on the screen. I can begin to make adjustments to them and also organize them as well. So I usually make some exposure adjustments, some color adjustments. Depending on what we're shooting, I might crop in a bit. So I usually take a couple shots, make some adjustments, and then every shot I take from then on will have those adjustments applied to it so that we can all see what the final product is gonna look like. We'll have a better idea of what the final product is gonna look like while we're shooting. I find this not only helps myself and the rest of the team, but also the client and also the subject that I'm shooting, whether it's a model or a musician or an actor, like whoever I'm working with, it helps for them to be able to see how it's coming out so they know how they're posing and, and they know whether to make any more adjustments. It just makes everyone feel a bit more comfortable. But one thing I've really changed in the last couple of months is actually using Capture One Live as well, which allows me to share the, the live photo shoot session with someone else who's not actually in the space we're shooting in. So what I do is that while I'm shooting, I can share a live link that can be viewed from anywhere in the world. So if there's anyone on the team who's not actually in the studio with us or someone in a different country, they can actually still participate in the photo shoot because they can see the photos coming through live and they can rate the images with star ratings or add color tags and begin to organize things. Or they can even add comments um, so we can see what, what they have to say about the shoot as it's ongoing as well. I think this has really helped, especially post-pandemic, because we've completely changed the way that we work. There's still a lot of Zoom meetings going on. There's still a lot of remote shoots. And being able to share the photo shoot session with people who are in a different city or a different country, it just opens me up to new opportunities and it allows me to share my photography and work with people all around the world. So after the shoot is done, I'll usually go through all of the photos and I already sort of applied a bit of a preset or a bit of a style to the photos while I was shooting, but I'll go through and refine that a little bit more, maybe make any like minor tweaks to the exposure settings or the color settings, maybe crop some of the photos, and I'll also get rid of any of the ones that I don't want that I'm not happy with before I send them over to the client. So to send the photos over to the client, I'll just send that Capture One link. Sometimes when you share photos of people, they'll want to post something that's not finished yet or something that they don't own the rights to. So it's good also that I can watermark photos before I put them on that Capture One Live link so that way they can't be used or copied. 
and I'll send that link out to the client and then from there they can go through in their own time either on their phone on their iPad or on their computer and they can have a look through all the photos from the shoot and they can actually make selects right there on that link using star ratings or color tags and those ratings will then come through to my Capture One Pro on my computer. So it's really handy, really easy and I've had good feedback from clients about using that process so it's actually made things a lot easier for me. In the past, I would have had to export all the images as like low res files and then upload them to like a Google Drive or something like that. And then the client would send me either the file numbers or send me screenshots of the pictures they want. It was just such a hassle, but I feel like using Capture One Live has really refined the process and everyone seems really happy with it. Everyone that I work with, clients, collaborators, they seem to really enjoy the process and it's kind of streamlined it and made it easier for me as well. So it's a win-win. If you're interested in trying out Capture One, make sure you check out the link in the description. It will give you a discount of 20% off your annual subscription, so make sure you check that out. So once all the selects have been made, I will export them from Capture One in the highest settings and move on to retouching. Now in retouching, I'll just clean up any stray hairs, any creases on the garment, any stuff on the floor, like anything that's a distraction, I'll just take that out retouch it and depending on the project um, if I'm doing skin retouching I might retouch it myself or I might send it to another retoucher. If I'm doing it myself I tend to use a frequency separation technique. There's tons of videos about retouching on YouTube about frequency separation and other techniques like dodge and burn so if you want to find out more about that just have a search there's tons of tutorials out there but typically I use a frequency separation technique because I find it works for me. I then save all the photos and then just send them over to the client. I typically use WeTransfer because it's super easy to do. And that's it, job done. So that's my seven step photography workflow. I feel like workflows can always be refined and adapted and changed, but I feel like I've got it in a good place. Um, I feel like it's in the best place that it has been throughout my career so far. And it's been a really busy first couple months in the year. So I'm really excited for what the rest of the year has to come. Let me know your thoughts. Is there anything that I do differently to how you do it? Is there anything that you picked up from this video that you didn't know about before or, or anything that you think I could adapt or change and make better? Let me know in the comments down below. If you're interested in more photography content, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.